So today we're looking at the EGR temperature sensor. We'll test a couple different things. If you are receiving trouble code P1401, we'll check the connection, we'll check the sensor itself, and this will pinpoint where the problem is. So let's get to it. Now the first step is just finding the harness connector for the temperature sensor. Now that sometimes can be the hardest part. Uh, best recommendation I can give you is do a Google image search. So for example, this is a Nissan Maxima. So type in your model year, Nissan Maxima, temp EGR temperature sensor, and a lot of times you can dig up schematics showing where the connections are. So what we're going to do is just disconnect this. Okay. And then we're going to see if we are receiving a voltage. Now to do this, you have to turn on the ignition to your vehicle. Turn on, don't start the car, don't crank the car, just turn on the ignition. And then we'll take a voltage reading. Now to do a voltage reading, you will need a multimeter. You can pick up one of these, maybe 15 or $20. Uh, Sears, your local auto parts store, they all have them. In this case, we want the volt setting. And we should see roughly 5 volts worth of power getting to this harness connector. So let's see what we end up with. Okay, so the way that this is set up, if you've never used a multimeter before, right here is your negative wire. This goes to ground, so any good metal point on the body. And this is your positive lead. Now in this case, we need to touch terminal number 1, which is this guy on the left. Okay, And again, the ignition key is turned on. And we should see roughly 5 volts worth of power getting to this harness connector. So let's see what we have. And we have 5 volts, as you can see, 4.8 volts. So that's plenty of power. So this verifies that power is getting to this harness connector. Now, the reason why you want to do this is because if you have a splice in one of the wiring back here, then power can't get to the temperature sensor. And the temperature sensor could be perfectly fine, but this is your problem. So this verifies that the wiring is okay. So the next thing we'll do is a continuity test. Continuity means that two points make a connection. That's all it means. And the continuity test will verify if the connection is okay from this harness connector uh, directly to the car's computer, the ECM. Okay, usually you won't have a problem doing this test, to be quite honest. But it's always good to check this. Now for this next test, we're doing continuity. Continuity, again, means two points make a connection. Now the symbol for continuity, it looks like a wireless uh, network symbol, okay? So right here, this is the setting you want on the multimeter. So if we go to mode in this case, okay, right here, that's the guy you need to see. So if I touch these two wires, we have an audible alert and that's what we need to do. Okay, so let's check the continuity. Okay, so right now you can't really see the screen because of the glare, it doesn't matter, because this is just an audible test. So again, negative wire goes to ground. In this case, the positive lead is going to number two, and we should hear an audible alert, and we do. So this verifies this connection is perfectly in terrific shape. Again, if you don't receive continuity, then you have a problem from the harness connector to the car's computer. Somewhere in that line, there's a break, and you need to track it down. But most of the times, the harness connection test doing the voltage and the continuity, you won't have any problems. Now the next step is testing that sensor itself. So what we're going to do is remove it from the vehicle, and I'll show you on how you can test the sensor, again using the multimeter, pinpoint exactly where the problem is. Now sometimes getting to the sensor, you have to remove some other things. In this case, I'm removing the idle air control valve. You could probably get to it without removing the valve, but it's not hard to do and uh, it makes the job a little bit easier. The more room you have, the better. It's just that simple. Whenever you work on cars, the more room, the easier it is. Okay. Now here's the harness connector. Now this is the end that we disconnected the harness from. In other words, it was just like this and we just disconnected the harness. But if you follow the wire, if you follow the wire, I'm not sure if you guys can see this. There we go. Just follow the wire and it will lead right to the temperature sensor, okay? Now if you are doing this on an older Maxima right here was the idle air control valve. Just remove it, one, two, three bolts. And then right there is the temperature sensor. So we'll remove it and I'll show you how you can test this sensor rather quickly. 
Now filming this is a little difficult so you guys can see this. But let me just show you exactly again where it is. So right there. Happens to be a 14 millimeter. I did spray a little bit of WD-40. So what I'm using is a very small wrench. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, actually let me zoom out here. It's a small wrench. Now the room is so confined, I can't really get enough grip to get my hand on it. So I'm just going to take a screwdriver. So I'll place the wrench over the nut, and this will be my pulling point. I'll pull the screwdriver, and hopefully it comes loose. It's either it's going to come loose, or it's going to strip, and that makes everything a lot worse. So let's see what happens. So place the wrench over the end. Make sure you have enough room here. Screwdriver. A little funky. Okay, hopefully, I hope you guys can see this, but just yank on this, and I think we got it. Okay, we did. Sweet. Okay. And let me zoom out here. There you go. There's your temp sensor. So what we're going to do, I'm going to grab a pot, put some water in the pot, and heat it up. And as the water increases in temperature we should see a resistance reading by using the multimeter. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's jump to the kitchen. Now for this final step we'll be taking a resistance reading of this temperature sensor. Now if you have a hair dryer you can use a hair dryer for this step. I don't have any hair so I don't have a hair dryer but in this case we'll be placing this on a stove. We'll be placing the sensor in a, in a pot of water We'll turn on the stove, and as the water to temperature increases, we should see a decrease in the resistance. And I'll show you what I mean. So at the end of the terminal here, with a harness connector, you have two terminals. So what you need to do, it doesn't matter which lead touches which terminal. Let me see so you guys can see this. But essentially, you need to take these two terminals and hold it to the ends. Now, that's a little cumbersome, so what I tend to use are alligator clips. You can purchase these pretty much anywhere. So I'll place one end, let's see, so one end will go here, okay, opposite end will go to the harness connector, okay, I'll just attach it like so. Other end will go to the opposite end, or the red wire on the multimeter. Go ahead, clip it onto the harness connector, and that's, that's it. So in other words, you don't have to be there holding the connectors to the harness sensor. Now regarding the reading, you can place this on volts or a resistance. Resistance is the omega symbol and we probably should have a reading. There you go. So we already have a reading. So as the water to temperature increases, this number should decrease. So let me show you an overview of what we have and this is how you can quickly test if this sensor is working or not. So here's our layout. It can be a little tricky sometimes just to place this correctly. Again, if you have a hair dryer, by all means you can use a hair dryer. That will also work. But nevertheless, just place the sensor into the water. We'll turn on the stove. And again, we should see a decrease in the reading here. So this is just a very, very quick test uh, if this sensor is working or not. Regarding the pot, my recommendation, don't use a pot that you cook in. Okay, use a pot that you have lying around that you just use for whatever the case may be. Don't use a cooking pot. You don't want dirt and grime in your food. So these are the steps involved if you are receiving P1401. Now in this case, I'm not receiving that specific code. I'm just doing this video as a how-to. But if you're receiving this code, check the harness connector. If all the connections are good, chances are it's just the sensor itself. Now there's one last possibility. If you did all these tests and you still have that P1401, slight chance it could be something called the EGRC solenoid valve. That's a separate uh, sensor all by itself. I do have a video already on that. I'll include the link in the description box. I'll also include it as a card. So just click on that. I go through the steps. That's pretty quick to test and verify if that's the deal. But again, usually if you are getting this, uh, this code, it's just a temperature sensor. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.